Do you actually need surgery for a rotator cuff tear? Many people are told surgery is the only option, but the truth is that's not always the case. In fact, depending on the type of the tear that you have, the results of surgery may not be better than the vast options of non-surgical treatments. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine physician currently practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've treated countless patients with rotator cuff injuries. And one of the most common and stressful questions that I get is, do I need surgery? So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly when surgery makes sense, when rehab may be just as effective, and what factors you need to consider to make the best decision for your shoulder. First, let's understand what the rotator cuff is. The rotator cuff is a group of four small muscles and tendons that keep your shoulder stable and allow you to lift, rotate, and reach overhead. And because we use our shoulders constantly, whether for work or sports or just everyday motions, the rotator cuff is vulnerable to injury. Rotator cuff tears usually fall into two main categories. There are degenerative tears that happen gradually with age and are especially common in people over 50. These often result from years of wear and tear rather than one specific injury. On the other hand, traumatic tears happen suddenly, like when you fall, if you lift something heavy or feel a sudden pop during sports. These are less common, but often much more severe. And the tricky part here is that just because imaging shows a tear does not mean you automatically need surgery. In fact, many people with rotator cuff tears have little or no pain. There was one report from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery that writes 54% of adults over 60 actually have a partial or complete tear on MRI, but most of them never even know it because their shoulder still works well. So the real problem isn't simply do you have a tear? The real question you want to ask is, how much is it affecting your quality of life and what's the best way to treat it for long-term shoulder health? And the reality is for the vast majority of people, surgery is not the starting point, rehab is. One review from the New England Journal of Medicine writes that most rotator cuff tears are degenerative. They are atraumatic and more prevalent with age. Non-operative treatment, including physical therapy, is typically recommended. Surgery is considered in some cases. So the focus of therapy is to strengthen the muscles around the shoulder blade. It's to help restore healthy posture and to retrain the rotator cuff itself. These changes can dramatically reduce pain and improve function even when the tendon remains torn. And the results from clinical studies are impressive. Observational studies show that over 80% of patients report less pain and better shoulder function within 6 to 12 months of structured physical therapy. Outcomes are especially good for patients with partial thickness tears, those without significant muscle atrophy or fatty infiltration, and those who are motivated to stick with a program. The key point here is that pain relief and functional recovery don't always depend on fixing the tendon. In fact, multiple randomized control trials have found that when you compare physical therapy to surgery, many patients improve just as much with exercise-based rehab at one to two years. For example, this study found that non-surgical and surgical treatments for rotator cuff tears provided equivalent improvements in pain and function. Surgery only yielded superior improvements to pain and function for full thickness rotator cuff tears. And while physical therapy is the foundation of non-surgical care, it's not the only tool that we have. Alongside exercise, there are other treatments that can help manage symptoms and support recovery. For some patients, anti-inflammatory medications can ease the pain just enough to get them moving again. Cortisone injections can also temporarily reduce pain and inflammation, but they don't help the tendon heal, and repeated cortisone injections may actually weaken the tissue over time. That's why I rarely recommend cortisone as a long-term solution. A much more promising option is platelet-rich plasma, also known as PRP injections. In this type of treatment, we actually use your own blood. We draw a small sample, spin it down to concentrate the platelets, and then we inject the growth factors directly into the rotator cuff tear. The goal here is to stimulate your body's natural healing process. And here's where things get really exciting. 
A recent randomized controlled trial found that a PRP injection led to complete healing in nearly 80% of partial supraspinatus tears within six months. By comparison, the placebo group healed only about 21% of the time. Patients in the PRP group also had significantly better improvements in shoulder function and pain scores. This is one of the strongest pieces of evidence that we have showing that PRP isn't just about reducing pain, it can actually heal partial tears in many patients. For full thickness tears, PRP is less likely to completely close the defect, but it can still help reduce pain and improve function, and oftentimes this will delay or even avoid the need for surgery. But even with all the progress in non-surgical treatments, there are still times when surgery is the best option. The key is knowing which situations fall into that category. For example, surgery makes the most sense in acute traumatic tears. These usually happen after a sudden injury, maybe a fall, lifting something heavy, or a sports accident. Patients often describe hearing or feeling a pop followed by immediate weakness. In these cases, the tendon is being pulled away from the bone, and without surgical repair, it won't reattach on its own. Another clear group that benefits from surgical intervention are younger, more active patients. Think athletes, construction workers, painters, or anyone who relies heavily on their shoulder strength for work. For them, leaving a significant tear untreated risks long-term loss of strength and performance. Now, the size and progression of the tear also matters. Large or massive tears are more likely to worsen if we leave them alone. Over time, the tendon can retract, the muscle can atrophy, and fat can then infiltrate the tissue. And once we see those types of changes, surgery becomes much less effective and sometimes even impossible. And finally, surgery becomes the right option when someone has gone through up to six months of structured non-surgical care, whether that's physical therapy, activity modification, maybe even PRP injections, but they still struggle with pain or disability. At that point, repairing the tendon can... So while most rotator cuff tears don't need surgery right away, there are specific red flags where surgery isn't just helpful, it's the only way to get the shoulder back. The bottom line is this. Most rotator cuff tears don't need surgery. Physical therapy and PRP are powerful first-line options, and surgery is best reserved for the right patient at the right time. But that raises the next question. Which exercises actually work best to rehab the rotator cuff? Check out this next video where I'll show you the exact exercise program that I give my own patients to rebuild strength and get back to pain-free movement.